Well, let me tell you something, brother! Snort, 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 tell you. Drip, snort, snort. I got the drip, yo. Um, so yesterday, we had a good podcast, and then we jumped into the first stream, which was Tekken 8. Now, originally, the idea for Tekken 8 was that I was going to learn a new character, but in order for me to learn a new character in a fighting game, it's not as simple as pick the character, go into training mode, play for 20 minutes, and jump online. That, that's not how it works, all right? In a fighting game, if you're actually trying to learn and be good and, and play well, you need to study. I know that I just said this in the last video, but I will reiterate for anybody who didn't watch the last video, that is absolutely not the case. You do not have to study a character in order to be good with them in a fighting game. It would definitely help if you looked up some higher tier strategies from players who actually knew what they were talking about, for sure. But in order to be good with them, you can absolutely just feel it out and figure out what you need to do to win a match live. DSP is just convinced that everybody's as gin-brained as him, but that's just not the case, obviously. But go ahead, DSP, give me the entire rundown about how you have to watch a bunch of videos to even be semi-decent at a fighting game. And what that would entail is me going online on YouTube, finding tutorial videos, watching things like basic strategies, basic combos, basic punishes, right? Things like that. Then watching some matchups to see how people implemented that character. That's literally how I learned Street Fighter 6. That's why I was able in Street Fighter 6 um, to basically get as good as I did and get multiple characters to master level. That was the only reason. And previously, I never really studied fighting games. It was always hands-on learning. But today, because I'm a full-time streamer, people don't really enjoy the hands-on learning. They want to see me start playing and kind of know what I'm doing right from the get-go. So... <clears throat> Yeah, who would have thought that when people tune into a stream to watch somebody play a game, they prefer that the person playing the game actually have some sort of in-depth knowledge about the game, or at least be entertaining. And we've already covered at length that DSP is definitely not the latter of the two. But I do have to at least appreciate the fact that he's acknowledging that the only reason that he ever made it to master rank in Street Fighter 6 or performed well ever is because he was watching videos and guides and basically being handheld the entire time. Because even when it comes to fighting games, DSP needs needs to be handheld to be any good at them. At this point, I'm not convinced that DSP is even capable of playing a video game by himself. But I guess it doesn't matter when you're a full-time streamer and don't actually enjoy games enough to be playing them when you're not live. Oh, what a life he lives. The idea was I was going to use a new character, but what happened was, Sunday, I was here in this office, extra overtime working all day long on React content. We had the React show on DSP Reacts, we had the Dark Souls React stream on DSP Throwback, and I had a private Patreon video of over an hour length to make. So once all that was done, I was like, dude, I am so burnt out that I just, I can't be watching Tekken videos all night to try to learn a new character. So I said, I'm not going to do it. And again, we talked about this in the last video, but I still think it's absolutely absurd that he has the gall to get on stream and say that he was too tired from watching other people's content all day to watch Tekken videos. It's not like you have to watch them actively, DSP. You could watch them passively and pick up on things here or there. You just have to listen to this person explaining what they're doing, and as long as you walk away with something, it wasn't wasted time. But of course, he was too beat, dude. He worked extra overtime, didn't you hear him? All those personal react videos videos for Slayer. He did say that the private react video for Slayer was 200 K-pop songs back to back, and I honestly don't know how he made it through it, but nonetheless, he definitely could have still watched some Tekken 8 videos. It's not that hard, man. Oh, and real quick, I was asked to enunciate the sentence I don't know because I always slur it together and roll through it. So for that one commenter, there's your little thing. I don't know. Big ups. I appreciate the comment, though. And then... Originally, what the plan then was, was that I was going to probably pick one uh, one hour of each of the characters who I've used in Tekken. So one hour of Paul, one hour of King, one hour of June, and do like uh, an hour each in this multiplayer session yesterday. But that didn't work out that way either, and here's why. When I started using Paul, I realized, oh crap, my Paul is way under level. And what I mean by that is, even though there is a general point total that you maintain in Tekken when you play online each character has to still go through individual ranks. So I was kind of mistaken when I originally criticized Tekken 8 and says, oh, the ranking system is not like Street Fighter 6 because the characters are all grouped together. That's not true. Well, imagine that. DSP was quick to judge something that he didn't fully understand. So it's totally okay for him to jump to these conclusions, but when people come to a reasonable conclusion about him after watching a lot of content involving him or directly from him, obviously they're detractors and don't know what they're talking about and just not giving him the benefit of the doubt or giving him his fair shake. And I actually 
initially thought that the Tekken 8 medley thing that he was going to do, where he was going to play basically one hour with each character, was an interesting idea, being that this is usually the guy who will spend multiple streams in a row playing one character in Street Fighter. But of course it didn't work out that way, because his Paul was underleveled. I'm not quite sure why that had any bearing on whether or not he played as other characters, because like he just addressed, the ranks aren't really shared, so if his Paul is underleveled, he could just go play as a other character, and it would be completely fine, and he would be playing in a different rank. But of course, leave it to DSP to find a way to play one character for an entire stream and be miserable the entire time doing it. In general, if you do really well with one character and you level them up, it will bring all your other characters up along with them, but actually not by that much, because I would say right now my June is my highest ranked character, but even then when I went to use Paul yesterday, he was still way down at the bottom, like maybe in like the blue or maybe early green leagues, as opposed to, you know, I had to go through the yellow, the orange, the red to get to the better challengers. So, I was like, oh, well, truth be told, you know, I'm way ranked low here with Paul. The whole first hour of me playing was essentially me spanking people who were nearly as good as me and didn't really know how to play the game that well. They didn't know his mix-ups, they didn't know how to stop anything he did. So because of that, it was just like a non-stop barrage of me whooping people. Did he just say that he was sitting there spanking people who were nearly as good as him and didn't know what they were doing? Don't worry, I'm gonna run it back. The whole first hour of me playing was essentially me spanking people who were nearly as good as me and didn't really know how to play the game that well. Yeah, that's definitely what it sounds like to me. Maybe there was a really quiet T where he said weren't nearly as good as me, but for a guy who usually enunciates his T's far more than they need to be, he could have done a little better job, you know? And after that first hour, people were like, wow, like even though it's satisfying seeing you win like that, we definitely want to see you have some challenge, so just keep playing with Paul. So I did, and in fact, the thing that was suggested to me was why don't you make a custom outfit for him quickly, just like you did with June? <laughs> that way it's not just the default Paul that we're staring at. So I did, I made an absolute uh, silly... Uh, outfit for Paul that we used. So we had like a stupid, like a, a, a Hawaiian style shirt, but it was like skulls and he had a guitar on his back and it looked really silly. Yeah, his Paul did look absolutely regarded, but I like that DSP just admitted that the Hawaiian shirt looked stupid and then he backtracked and just kept saying the word silly instead. It's funny because I think that that's actually what he means when he says the word silly. He does the same thing with the hat and the glasses and the vest. He always says silly hats, a silly vest, but I think he really wants to say stupid because even he's aware of how stupid stupid the goddamn vest is how stupid his hats are but hey if people keep paying for it he's gonna keep doing it why not dude it's basically free money for him um and i proceeded to keep playing and overall i won twice as much as i lost which is pretty darn good now for clarification purposes no i didn't get to as high of a rank with paul as i did with june so when i'm playing with june kazama i'm fighting better players and that's why i'm breaking even when i play with her when i'm playing with paul <clears throat> i am getting there and there were some losses like i would say dragon of right now is a tricky character for me because he has a lot of fast, safe moves that I'm not sure really how to read and or counter. I mean, he's got a launcher where he does his uppercut and it's like a full screen range and it freaking goes through everything and it's instant. And I'm like, so he hits me with that, he gets a free like 50% combo and it's so fast and so much better than launchers of other characters. I'm like, damn, that's a huge advantage for him. Also, his uh, heat smash is crazy fast and does giant chunks of damage. So it's like, uh, <laughs> it's character knowledge for me at this point. I'm facing certain characters that I've never seen before or I don't really know what they're capable of and then they just abused them like, damn, I just got completely baited by this like four times in a row because I didn't realize the character had that. How does that sentence make any sense? I just got baited by this four times in a row because I didn't know that that character had that. You just seen it three other times. How did you fall for it a fourth time? Of course, once again, the answer is that DSP has the gin brain. He is actually incapable of identifying people using patterns, which is so ironic being that he wants to say that everybody in Street Fighter is a pattern player. He can't see that people are doing this same setups. He can't see that people are doing the exact same combos. That's why anytime he plays a fighting game and complains about pattern play, the only answer you can ask is, well, DSP, if it's a pattern, why can't you stop it? Why can't you do something about it if you know what they're doing? How this guy was ever a professional fighting game player is beyond me because he actually has no skill when it comes to any sort of fighting games. That's something that'll come in time as I play more tech and I'll learn, okay? So anyway, I ended up playing the entire stream with Paul Phoenix, which originally wasn't the plan. I won twice as much as I lost. I think I won like 40 wins and lost like 20 times or something like that. Um, but I made great gains, you know, leveled him up pretty high. If I play with him again now, I should be at a level where I'm going to be fighting good comp, okay? So that's a great thing. 
When I find out who taught DSP the word comp instead of competition, you're going straight to ban world. I hate it. It's just another example of him using vocabulary that he has no business using because he wants to sound smarter than he really is. He wants to sound like he knows what he's talking about. And he thinks that that's mission accomplished when he uses words like comp instead of competition. I noticed it in the last video when he was talking about Tekken and I didn't call it out then, but he did it yet again now. So I have to, I just can't ignore it anymore. It's obnoxious. But, I definitely noticed something, and you guys are going to probably notice it too, especially if you're those who watch videos on demand as opposed to the live streams. Um, I can now definitively tell all of you, I am not getting nearly as much. I mean, I'm getting like a fraction of the views and attention on Tekken as I did on Street Fighter VI. Well, then that's really just following a pattern too, DSP, because you get a fraction of the viewers on every video that you used to get on your channel. It's really nothing new for you. I really don't know why you're acting surprised about this, but this is the real reason we're talking about Tekken 8 today, because DSP is desperately trying to figure out how he can make Tekken 8 more profitable for him, because the support is just low, you guys. Case in point, those videos with Paul, which is good gameplay. It's me kicking butt with Paul, getting big combos, learning strategies, mix-ups, doing good stuff and getting progressively better. It's good gameplay. You know, it is. It's my journey with Paul to get better. Those videos in 24 hours don't even have 300 views each. You know? And I know that's, that's a weird arbitrary number, but for me, over the years on YouTube, like, for, for any new game or something, you should look to aim at least to get 300 views. You know, within the first 12 hours, if you don't get 300 views within 24 hours, it essentially means there's not a lot of interest, right? <laughs> This is not a way for me to flex. This is not a humble brag. It's just putting this into perspective. If I got 300 views in 24 hours, I would probably take the video down. It must have sucked really, really bad. I don't know how 300 views is an acceptable amount of views in 24 hours for DSP. It just kind of shows you the state of his channel. And I think that goes really for a lot of the detractor channels. If they got 300 views on a video, like that must be a bottom of the barrel, worst of the worst style video. But for DSP, it's just another day in the life of a dying YouTuber. It's just crazy to see how far he's fallen and continues to fall. Just waiting for the day that we're getting hype about 100 views in 24 hours. It'll happen eventually. And that's fine if you're balancing it with other stuff, but this is a brand new fighting game. It's only been out a week and a half, all right? When I was playing Street Fighter VI, right, and I was playing it and, and leveling up and stuff, there was two to three times as much interest as this. We had more people on the streams, we had more people engaged and invested in it, we had more people supporting it, and we had more people watching it, okay? So... Here's the thing. I don't think it's me because I'm actually approaching this game the same way I did Street Fighter 6. Imagine that. DSP thinks that it's not his fault. I mean, he did everything correct and he did nothing wrong. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And by the way, Cat agrees. The guy just never changes, man. He just never changes. It's always the same thing. At some point, I'm going to be able to just take one of these voiceovers and put it onto a new video and nobody would know the difference because it would still be accurate to what DSP is talking about. I'm studying. I'm getting better. I'm trying to learn. <clears throat> this is not me just messing around with the game and losing and then raging at the game. I'm actually legitimately trying to understand why I'm losing. I'm asking questions of the chat. Hey, why do you think I lost that? What is it with this move? What was that move? Was that his heat smash or was that something else? How do you avoid that? Can you punish that? I do genuinely think though that if DSP was raging at the game, was getting upset on his losses, that he would be getting higher views. People would be coming to the stream more obviously to see him rage and experience the salt. And I can understand that because that's far more entertaining than pulling up to a stream and having a streamer constantly ask you questions so that you handhold them through all of their gameplay. Answering a streamer's question every once in a while is totally fine, but if they're constantly asking you questions about how to play the game, shit, dude, I might as well just go play the game myself. Why am I here? Unless that's the entire point, like you're doing a first run and you're like backseat gaming style stream, but that's not what DSP does. That's completely irrelevant. And I'm trying to learn actively. I want to get better at Tekken because I really like this game. And quite frankly, I've always liked Tekken. I just never had the investment in it as I did Street Fighter. And I'll be honest, I think Street Fighter 6 has played out. Now it's been out, what, eight months? And every time I play it, it just feels like it's more of the same, people playing exactly the same way, abusing the online connections and getting away with stuff. And it's just not that fun anymore. Sure, every once in a while to do a stream of it probably would be neat. But until they either rebalance it with a season two or they add enough significant new content, I don't feel like I really want to play it that much anymore. I actually, I'm burnt out on it. You know, I'm not really enjoying myself when I play that game.
Well, DSP, I don't think you're having that much fun with the game anymore because you've come to the realization that everybody else has that you're actually not as good as you thought you were. And I'm sure that can be a difficult thing to come to grips with given how big and fragile your ego is. But I'm not surprised that you're not having fun. How many salty streams can you have in a row before you realize that maybe you aren't having fun anymore? And don't worry, DSP, everybody feels that way eventually when you play competitive games. How many times did I go and play Rainbow Six Siege back in the day before I realized I just wasn't having fun? fun and was angry instead. It's okay to admit that you're bad. I was bad at that game and it's totally fine. That's why I don't play it anymore. And that's the same boat that you're finding yourself in, I'm sure. You just need to admit it and move on instead of coping and seething like you do about it. But here's the thing, people ask for months, oh, I can't wait for Tekken. When Tekken comes out, really excited to see Phil play Tekken again. And then when I started playing it, people were like, we're shocked. We thought Phil was not that good at Tekken, but he's decent. I would say I'm, I'm average at Tekken. I'm not good at this game. I know I'm not. I, I don't have character knowledge to be good. Once I learn the characters and I know their moves and capabilities and I learn what's blockable, what's not, what's parryable, what can be punished, what can, how do you dodge this? Do you duck it? Do you, you know, once I figure that stuff out, then, then I'll say I'm getting better at Tekken. Right now, I feel like I'm just average. I have fundamentals or I'm getting fundamentals in this game because I played Tekken before, but it's definitely not as good as I am a Street Fighter. Um, but again, even then, people were like, wow, we're surprised. You definitely are better than you let on. The way you were talking is that you're not good at the game. But look, you're getting win streaks and everything. There's a couple of people in DSP's chat that I actually agree with. So we're going to take a look. Bill Williams says, who has been saying that? Reveal yourselves. I agree. Tommy Salami says, who are these people he's speaking of? I'm asking that same question. Who is inflating DSP's ego like this? Because I've seen the Tekken 8 stream. He's not good at the game. And he still whines and cries regardless of whether the game is Street Fighter 6 or Tekken 8. Because it's never his fault that he's bad so i guess shout out those two people in chat who are asking the same question i am who i mean you're right but i've also been playing at the lower levels take a look what happened with paul as soon as i got to a level uh, where people knew what they were doing then the matches were much closer and it was kind of back and forth as opposed to me dominating right um but yeah like just it's indisputable at this point take a look at the reaction and the amount of attention that tekken 8 is getting on this channel versus street fighter 6 it's night and day now you might say there's there various reasons for this number one all right i'm not known for fighting games and, I, you know, I was at one point. I was actually known as, hey, that's the guy who plays Super Turbo online. That's the guy who messes around with Street Fighter 4 and does fun Madness series sets, and those are really fun too, right? I used to do that stuff. <laughs> Quite frankly, I was known as the guy who freaked out when playing fighting games and yelling at their opponents in a toxic way, and people thought it was funny, and that was the shtick that got me popularity on YouTube for fighting games back in the day. It wasn't my skill level. I'm glad that we're acknowledging that. I don't know if it's the first time he's said that. Honestly, it's really difficult to keep track of things like that. But regardless of whether or not this is a first, I still have to appreciate it. DSP being honest, people only enjoyed his content because he was acting like an asshole and being toxic online. He still might be lying in the fact that people thought it was funny and not just a spectacle to point and laugh at this grown man raging at a video game. But hey, it's baby steps. A little bit of self-awareness is better than none. It might have taken him a decade, but he got there eventually. But that leaves me with the question as to why he thought that he was the person who was supposed to be supplying fighting game tutorials on YouTube back in the day. Because that used to be something that he did, something that he actively talked about and told people to go check out if they wanted to learn something about a fighting game. So if he was incapable of bringing an audience of people to watch him simply because of his skill, why did he think that he was capable of teaching? Honestly, I, I think today, with the level that I am at in Street Fighter 6, with multiple characters at master level. Already, the level I'm playing at in Tekken 8, a week and a half in, this is much better than I've played in fighting games ever on YouTube before, except Super Turbo. That would be the one game I would say, yeah, I played at a high level at that game. But outside of that, this, of a new fighting game, these are the best I've ever performed in new fighting games, right? So, that's the thing, and it's like, so what exactly am I supposed to do differently? I honestly don't know, all right? Because right now, we've, we've come to a point where I have to make a decision. So let me explain to you what I mean by that. And no, it's not, am I dropping Tekken? No, because I'm not dropping Tekken. I like Tekken. I'm going to keep playing Tekken, okay? But here's the decision that we have to come to, all right? So listen up, guys, because this is the decision that we have to come to, which should tell you that he's obviously going to be asking for feedback. He's going to be asking for his audience to once again make a decision for his streams because he is incapable. Here's an idea, DSP. If you want to play the game, play the game. And if you want to play with a different character, play with a different character. If you want to use the same one all the time, just do that. Who gives a shit? But go ahead, ask for your feedback. I'll quit talking. I'm not going to be playing Tekken 8 as much as Street Fighter 6. I can't. Why? Because number one, right now there's a lot of other games going on that I need to continue to make progress in. And if I play as much Tekken as I did Street Fighter VI, um, I won't make the progress in those games that I need to. Alright? So that's just being matter of fact. But number two, Tekken is not getting as many views, attention, or support as Street Fighter VI did. 
And of course, that's the most important factor that goes into all of this. So keep that in mind while we come to a decision about my streams. Because that first thing he said, you know, about the time constraints or whatever is complete bullshit given the fact that he could just cut the pre-stream short if he really wanted to. It'll be a cold day in hell before that actually happens because he's trying to play as little video games as possible day to day. But it's always an option if it really came down to it. So because of that, I just can't play it more often. I can't be playing it four or five times a week like I was doing with Street Fighter 6. It, it, it wouldn't support the business. You understand? It just wouldn't. <clears throat> Yesterday, I barely hit the tier one goal for tips and everything else was slow as hell. Like, basically, it was like, wow, I'm doing a daytime stream of Tekken thinking that it's going to bring in more viewers and it actually kind of did the opposite. Like, I probably would have done better playing any other game. And I'm like, wow, I'm, su I'm surprised at this. I am. I'm definitely surprised at this. Um... I know it's a running meme in the detractor community that these segments are like boardroom meetings with the dents, but man, is it accurate? Because he's sitting here talking about how if he played the game as frequently as he was playing Street Fighter 6 that it wouldn't support the business. Why would any of your viewers give a shit whether or not your business is supported? It wasn't their decision to make you a full-time streamer. They watch the content for free. They don't hold any stocks in DSP space gaming. They don't have any investments into the company. So why are we sitting here talking about your support again DSP. The other day when you were talking about the Argentinian style memberships, you were talking about how people don't come by to listen to you talk about how support is low and how memberships are fake, so you're gonna quit talking about it. But yet here we are talking about how the support is low on Tekken 8. It's just so tiresome DSP. Pick a different script. I just, it confuses me because again, the vibe that I was getting from my audience for months was we're getting bored of Street Fighter 6, we can't wait for Tekken 8 because we like how you covered Street Fighter 6, so we want to see that in another different fighting game franchise. So that's exactly what I'm giving you, but definitely the attention's not there for it, all right? So my question is, how do I approach moving forward in Tekken with all of this being the case? And here's the two scenarios. Number one, I play the game more casually. And what I mean by that is, I take maybe like once a week, I pick a new character. And maybe like for Friday night fights, you know, I go into to training mode and I do a, a half an hour of practice. And then we play for about 90 minutes of online play. And then I do another stream later in the week of, of online multiplayer with that character. So essentially you're talking like four, four and a half hours of online multiplayer with a new character each week. Where I just try to learn the basics. I start from the bottom, right? And I try to learn basics, combos or whatever and apply. And I can do that like once a week. Because at, at least I want to play Tekken 8 twice a week. Probably one night stream, one day stream. Okay? So if that's the case, then doing it that way right? Maybe I can learn one character a week. And then over the course of a month or two, I'll know like eight or nine characters. Okay. So for anybody who was willing to sit through that and needs all of that summarized, he's basically saying that he'll play two streams a week, one of which he'll practice and try and learn a character. And then the second one, he'll go online. I don't know why it took him so long to say that, but that's what he said. But that's only the first option. There's still a second option to come. You know, DSP was talking about how he can't have his chat on his screen because it would be distracting from the gameplay. So he very clearly acknowledges that his audience doesn't exactly have the best attention span. But he just spent about a minute and a half if it wasn't sped up talking about something that could have been easily explained in less than 30 seconds. He never fails to amaze me with how much air he can actually waste in a given day. That's one approach. All right. The other approach is instead of doing that, I focus in on three or four characters that I like, that I'm good with, and that I'm getting better with. And I really try to improve with just those characters and I basically get to a much higher level of gameplay. So I have to ask DSP, if you're not playing with all of the characters, how do you know which ones you like? How do you know which ones you're good with or getting better with? Wouldn't that require you to have played with at least most of the characters to know something about all of them? I had the same questions when it came to who he picked in Street Fighter 6. Like, what is his criteria? Why does he decide to pick the characters that he decides to pick? I've never understood that. Because when I pick up a fighting game, I usually have, you know, the one character from the previous game that I Really enjoyed playing and I'll play with them first and then I'll try out a bunch of different characters either in the arcade mode or you know casual matches or in the story mode and I'm actively looking for characters that I want to play with. DSP on the other hand just seems to pick them arbitrarily as far as I'm concerned and I just don't know what his criteria is but it seems like after he picks just a couple he isn't interested in playing any of the other characters. He doesn't even want to see what they play like. It's just oddly close-minded because I don't know why you wouldn't want to play with any of the 
the characters that came in the game that you purchased. That doesn't make sense to me. It'll be way more challenging. It'll be frustrating because people are going to be good. They already are. Like when I'm playing with June, I'm playing damn good players who are mixing me up and hitting me with stuff I've never seen. I'm like, damn, you know, this is going to be hard to hang with these players when I really don't know what I'm facing. You know, it's complete lack of game knowledge because I haven't really played this franchise that much, right? So in this regard, if I really only focus on three or four characters, it's going to be like Paul, King, June, and maybe I pick one more. All right. And then every time you see me play Tekken 8, it's going to be me focusing on those characters. You know, maybe on Friday Night Fights, it'll be one character. And then when I play it again on Monday or Tuesday, it'll be one of the other characters. And then the next Friday Night Fights, it's the other character. And I kind of rotate. Because if I do that, then I feel like if I'm focusing on the same characters and I'm studying, and I'm watching matchup knowledge online and stuff like that, I'm going to learn. I'm going to get better. You're going to see me climb the ranks. It'll be slow because it's not going to be like Street Fighter 6 where I was playing it constantly but it'll be slower progress, but it will still be progress. Yeah, I gotta press X to doubt on that DSP because I really don't think that you're capable of learning. I don't think that you're capable of making forward progress in a fighting game. And maybe that's a bit hyperbolic. You can learn some things, but I don't think that it's actually gonna be anything worthwhile. I don't think that you're gonna make large improvements in your skill by just focusing in on a couple of characters. And that's why I'm a firm believer that you should just be playing with all of the characters whenever you feel like and try and keep it as fresh as possible for your dent. And that's why I thought that your Tekken 8 medley or whatever that you called it the other day was going to work had you done it. But instead you decided to play for three hours straight with Paul. That was very robust and meaningful. But he's always talking about how he has to hang with these higher skilled players and then reach these higher tiered ranks. When the reality is DSP's nothing but a clown and him trying to focus in on these things seems to be a huge waste of time. DSP, you're a streamer first and foremost. Why don't you focus on being entertaining before you start worrying about what rank you are in the fighting game why don't you worry about having fun and therefore having fun with your audience before you start worrying about whether or not you're actually good at the game because when it comes to being a streamer i think that that's far more important above everything else because the reality is you can be as bad as you want at video games as long as you're fun and entertaining but dsp has never been that that's why when he was bad at video games he got called out for it he's just got his priorities mixed up like always you understand um Here's the thing, there's just not enough attention on, on Tekken 8 to warrant me playing it more or, or as much as Street Fighter 6, therefore you're not going to see the same things happen like happened with Street Fighter 6. For example, in Street Fighter 6, I literally within a month played like with 10 characters. I did. Like I was picking two characters a week and learning them and going online and messing around. Now I wasn't good with all of them. For example, DJ I played once, went, did horribly, never went back. Mano played once, did horribly, never went back, right? <laughs> but through me playing so many characters... I finally caught on with those that I really liked and it allowed me to learn and get better and then latch on to say four or five that I really liked and bring them to master level. And now I have egg on my face because I totally forgot that he did play other characters in Street Fighter 6 and he just sucked ass with them so he never played with them again. How could I have forgotten? But unlike DSP, I'm not incapable of admitting when I was wrong. I totally forgot that those streams existed. That's my bad. So now that we've confirmed that he did in fact play other characters in Street Fighter 6 and then from that decided to pick a couple to actually hone in on and actually get good with, good in quotes obviously, why are we not at least starting that process in Tekken Eight, even if it doesn't come to fruition at the end. Even if we're not going to be playing Tekken 8 as often or as seriously as we were playing Street Fighter 6, why wouldn't we at least start the process by playing all of these characters and getting a feel for all of them and then picking a couple by the end? That seems like a fairly decent way to start in on a fighting game, doesn't it? And it kind of sounds like the exact way that I would play a fighting game. That's the way I described it earlier. It would give your audience the ability to see all of the characters that are in the game, what they look like, what they do, how they play, and then by the end, with a people People that wanted to see the game saw it and they can move on and the people that want to stick around are going to be looking for that higher tier gameplay and that's obviously when you would be making the switch to honing in on a couple of characters specifically to get better with with Tekken I'm not going to be playing it that much so I'm not going to be able to play 10-15 characters and then pick out of those the four or five that I like it's got to be one or the other either I play it casually and you will see more variety but I just won't do that well I won't get good or I focus on a smaller group of characters and I do get good, but then you're not going to see a lot of variety, right? So the reason that we can't do the strategy that worked in Street Fighter 6 is because DSP is arbitrarily setting a limit on how often he can play Tekken 8. That's the end of the story. Even though I think that if he would have employed his strategy from Street Fighter 6 into Tekken 8, that it would have carried over more viewership. It would have been a more interesting time for the people who watched. But I think the only reason that Street Fighter 6 actually got that treatment was because it was being bankrolled by people like Game Trekker who were going to pay him regardless of how he played. So he was guaranteed 
guaranteed to be playing it anyway, which means that he had all of this extra time to experiment with all of these characters. I guess it's just a shame that Game Trekker didn't show up for Tekken 8, dude. I mean, a shame for him, not for me. I would prefer that he quit playing Tekken 8 as soon as possible. I really can't stand DSP when he plays fighting games because he likes to pretend like he knows everything and actually has some sort of knowledge about the subject. Not that I'm really ever a fan of his gameplay, but fighting games especially. And I feel like, again, I'm in one of those situations that no matter, no matter what I do, I can't please everyone. There's going to be some people who are always going to be asking for another character. It's happening right now. I'm not even kidding you. As I decided to play with Paul yesterday, there are people in the chat. So when's your new character? Is it going to be Yoshimitsu? Is it going to be Kuma? Who's it going to be? We're waiting. When's your next character? I'm like, can I just play with Paul? Can I just play and get better? Like, again, I think a lot of people, they don't understand how fighting games work. <laughs> And that's fine, especially for those of you who've never played at a competitive level. But there is a grind involved. It's not simply you play with a character once, oh, you know them, now move on. That's not the case. There's always knowledge to be learned. There's always matchups to, 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 to get better at. And that's the case. Like, I think what happens is people see me beat up people with Paul quick, and they're like, oh, he already knows Paul. No, no, no. I'm just beating people who don't know how to play. No, DSP, it's a new game. People want to see what the game has to offer. And by playing with the same character all of the time, you're not showing them what the game has to offer other than this one aspect. I think this carries over to a lot of games. If you're playing Call of Duty right when it comes out and you're only using one class, one gun, one setup, people are going to be very bored very quickly and constantly ask you to use different stuff because they want to see what else is in the game. They want to see if any of these skills that you've been building with this one class setup, or in this case, this one character, carries over to another. They want to see what the real balance of the game is like. They want to see all of the animations, how good these characters look, all the designs. Like, they want to see the whole thing. But go ahead and sit here and talk down to your dense DSP. They love that. Go ahead and tell them that they don't understand how competitive fighting games work and how you know so much more than them. Viewers love being talked down to. That's what keeps them engaged. That's what keeps them coming back for more, right? Is that what they taught you when you were getting your business degree to talk down to all of your customers because that guarantees they'll come back i mean yeah i guess maybe they'd come back come back to spit in your face once i get to that level like it was at the end of yesterday's stream where people are better now it's a big more daunting task to get those wins this is where the real challenge lies for me you see and um i hope that you guys will continue to tune in no matter what i do but at this point i do need feedback what would you like to see do you want to see me keep playing with new characters and just learn general knowledge about the game and not get better or do you want to see me play with three or four characters focus in solely on them and get better because there's got to be a choice at this point. If I'm playing it twice a week, we have to make the decision now so I know how to approach it. Like this coming Friday night, right? My choice is either pick a new character or play with King again. Because I haven't played with King now in a week and I would like to get better with King. I was doing well with King and then I kind of hit a wall where I was like, oh, these faster characters are jabbing me and interrupting everything I do. So my next step with King would be go online and look for like punish stuff for King. What's his best fastest move so I can punish people who are just spamming me with light quick attacks? That's what I need to figure out. And I'll do that or I'll learn a new character. Well, DSP, it sounds like you already have a game plan. It sounds like you want to play with King and get better at the game. So why don't you just do that? Why don't you do that and be entertaining while you do it? Because again, that's the most important part. You can do anything you want on a stream as long as you're entertaining while you do it. So why don't you focus on that instead of focusing on what you're doing in the game? Because while I personally think that it would be a better option for your style of audience to pick a different character and keep things fresher, the other option is just as viable if you are willing to be entertaining while you do it. But of course, DSP is incapable of making this decision for himself. He doesn't actually want to decide what he's doing on the stream, because if he decides, then it's his own fault when it doesn't go well. But if you guys decide, well, then he can just blame you. He's the king of deflection. He's the king of getting out of being held responsible for anything. So it's like, so what do I want to do? What do, what do you guys want? You know, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I can see the size of both of it. Back in the day when I played a fighting game, I learned every character and I didn't get good at it. Like, that's what I used to do. Remember when street, a new Street Fighter would come out? I would just play every character. Today we're doing Ryu. Tomorrow we're doing Chun-Li. Then we're going to do this new character. Then we're going to do this one. And every day would be a new character. Me messing around, learning basics and doing a set online and then on to the next and then on to the next. But I never got good at the games. Like, I would argue Street Fighter 4, I was at best an average player. I never got good at it because I never focused on it. It was always me all over the place, right? So, again, I don't know what to do. And I really, I think, see, already, I'll tell you right now, in the chat, just listen to this. One person says, variety, getting good is for yourself. Variety is for fun in the audience. Let the pro-competitor mentality go. Next person says, just pick new characters later. Focus on Paul, King, and June right now because you're learning. That's two little, two lines next to each other in my chat. <laughs> so it's like, uh, Abdullah says, play different characters. No point getting better with a character because you're a variety streamer. If you focus only on Tekken 8, then it makes sense. But for the sake of being a variety, do that. And then Cracker Jack's next line, get good at a few characters. That's your best content.
But this happens every single time that he asks for direct feedback from his chat. It's always all over the place. It's always half the people saying one thing and then the other half saying another. If he wants legitimate feedback, he needs to be reading the comments on the videos. He needs to put up some sort of poll, some way that he can accurately count the numbers of what people are saying, not just reading a handful of chats that are happening right then and there when he asks. And of course, this feedback is going to be skewed anyway, because you know how many LARPers are in his chat. You know how many people are going to tell him to do something that they very specifically don't think is worth his time or even gonna work out at all. That's why it baffles me that he continues to ask for feedback so frequently because he knows that there's trolls and LARPers in his chat that are out to see him fail. He's always being paranoid side Phil except for when it comes to the feedback. You'd think as paranoid as he is that he would only trust his own opinion on what's best for his streams. So he would be making all of the decisions himself but for some reason that's just not the case. He always just wants to throw his hands up in the air and leave it to fate, leave it to these dents in the chat. I don't know if your own live stream is the place where you should be taking a hands-off approach, DSP. If you ask me, your streams could use a little bit of a hands-on approach. You could take a little more charge when it comes to the content that you put online. Put a little more effort in. Take a little more charge. Give it some sort of direction. Or you need to go the complete opposite way and give everybody all of the freedom and just do basically whatever they want whenever they want and just have a fun time doing it. Those are really your two options. And I think you're too much of a control freak to do the latter. I, I think I rest my case in the case in, in my point that it doesn't matter what I do, I disappoint people because everyone wants me to do everything. And I, sadly, I just I can't I can't do every scenario, you know, especially with this. I'm getting pulled in all these directions. Keep playing Baldur's Gate. Get further in Like a Dragon. Hey, we really, really like the Chill Pal World streams. Man, your React stuff's really good. Do more retro uh, React streams on DSP Throwback. Oh, by the way, play more Tekken and do two different things in Tekken at the same time. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Wait, he just got up and left? Why did he leave? He didn't even give us a warning. He straight up just walked off the screen. What the hell? Well, I guess we'll just wait here till he comes back. Now. I have a request of the on-demand audience, meaning those of you who are watching this podcast right now on demand, you're not here live for the stream. Because every day I get feedback from the live stream. All right, I do. I get good feedback and I weigh and balance it. Who I really want more feedback from is the on-demand viewer. Those of you out there who just watch everything after the fact, because you're not here to give me your feedback live, okay? Here's the thing. I'm distinctly noticing a difference in the viewership of Tekken when it comes to the on-demand video. The videos for Street Fighter did really, really well, and then it tapered off after like a month or two. With Tekken, we're a week in and already the views, like I said, th that's the Paul gameplay from yesterday was good gameplay. I'm getting better. I'm playing better. By the end, I'm having really fun competitive matches. I can't even get 300 views in 24 hours. So what gives? I'm really not sure whether or not you're allowed to be the one that determines whether or not the gameplay was good, DSP. I think that your audience should be the one that's determining that, and by not watching the video and not engaging with the video, I would venture to say that that's not the case. The gameplay isn't good. And he has to acknowledge that those Street Fighter videos very clearly got more views because they were full of salt because he was raging, right? He can't be oblivious to that fact, that people were going out of their way to grab these clips to watch his raw videos even, specifically to see the and while he's still crying and whining when it comes to Tekken 8, it's not nearly on the same level. So of course people aren't going to go out of their way to watch these videos. It's just kind of bad gameplay. And last I checked, people weren't going out of their way to watch bad gameplay. Not usually at least. We're a little different over here on the tractor side. That's what I'd really like to know. Like what gives, what's the difference between this and Street Fighter? Was there a reason that you watched the Street Fighter footage and you don't like the Tekken? It, you know, I really want feedback because I want to be putting out content you guys like, and I want to know what it is. That's the definitive difference. Because I thought there would be, like, kind of hitting a reset button. Um, I really thought that hitting a reset button with the fighting game would be, rejuvenate interest. I thought that the interest for fighting games had tapered off because I kept playing Street Fighter Six. Now what I'm starting to realize, maybe it was just people are just burnt out on fighting games because I played them for seven months straight. And now it's just not that special anymore, right? DSP, what do you know about hitting a reset button? When's the last time you restarted either your desktop or your laptop? Now you're a master of restarting and hitting the reset button? I don't think so, Chief. Slow down. But this segment just seems to keep going, doesn't it? And I promise it's not because I keep interrupting. It's bugged YouTube mechanics, dude. Nothing I could do. But he really could just sit here and ponder all day long as to why he's not getting the viewership on Tekken 8 that he was on Street Fighter 6. There could be infinite possibilities as to why, DSP. You're not gonna get one second satisfactory answer that you can just fix. These things don't work like that. And sitting here asking over and over again what the problem is isn't gonna solve the problem either. You're just wasting everybody's time and honestly being disrespectful about it. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, maybe that's really what it is. People just got burnt out on fighting games in general and I get that. Uh, it was Just think about this. Street Fighter 6 in June, Mortal Kombat 1 in September, Tekken in January. 
So within a six month period, three ginormous high profile big fighting game franchises all came out with a new iteration. So that's a lot of fighting games in a short period of time. So maybe that's what it is, right? I just, I'm not sure what to do about this. I want to make content you like. And I was under the impression people were all over Tekken 8 and waiting for it. That's the feedback I was getting on streams and everything. And then I tried to play uh, this game and it seems like there's just not that much interest, you know? Um, so what's the deal? I need feedback. I cherish your feedback. I want you to understand this. Oh, don't lie, DSP. The only thing you cherish is Hulk Hogan and Jin. Don't sit here and act like you actually give a shit what your audience has to say. The only thing that you want to hear is that people are going to show up and give you money. I really appreciate feedback. Please leave comments on this video You, if you're part of the on-demand audience. I want to know your opinion. Do you just not care about fighting games? Do you burn out on them because I played so many? Would you like to see me play new characters in Tekken and not really get good, but just casually play it? Would you like to see me focus on a few small characters and get better at it? Like, what is it you want to see out of Tekken? Or is it that you just don't care about Tekken because fighting games don't interest you? That's really what I want to hear, okay? Please give me that feedback. Because here, here's the deal. Right now, having a fighting game balanced with two RPGs is the way to go. It's complete action as opposed to very slow combat in Baldur's Gate 3 and a lot of lore, or almost a, a very Japanese-centric RPG in Like a Dragon, which is great, but you see, you need that action. If I wasn't playing an action-based game right now, I feel like everyone would be complaining everything's too slow and boring. So Tekken's the thing breaking it up, which is great. So playing a fighting game while you play these two other RPGs is the way to go, and it's great that Tekken 8 is breaking it up, but they're low support streams and people aren't turning out for it. So is it really a good thing, DSP? Those seem like contradictory statements to me. Because if people aren't showing up to watch the content, that can't be a good thing, right? And you said it yourself that these are low support streams that people aren't giving you money for, so you know that's a bad thing. That's the only thing you care about. So I'm failing to see where Tekken 8 is exactly a good thing on your schedule um but i need to play it in a way that entertains people okay so please feedback needed so i because this friday i'm playing it again friday night fights so the question is am i focusing in on king and doing a king stream to, on friday night where i will study some videos watch some matchups probably watch like a, a video that maybe we'll do tutorial about how he punishes uh unsafe moves and then try to get better with him. Is that what I'm doing? Or am I going to pick a new character, study up on them, and try someone from scratch on Friday? That's what I need to figure out. So please give me feedback. I keep telling you guys, feedback is essential. I get a lot of feedback from this uh, this live audience. I don't get a lot of feedback from you guys who are on-demand viewers. For whatever reason, a lot of the times I ask for feedback on these videos, and I get like next to none. And it's like, well, then I, I just got to make a decision best from what the feedback I got. But I want to be sure I'm doing the right things for everyone. My, uh, my viewer audience here, on-demand versus live, I understand that they're different audiences. You know, a lot of you guys who watch me on demand are people who are longtime viewers who've watched me for years and years. Some of you only watch the podcast and then only watch gameplay when it's your cup of tea. A lot of people come back to the channel for the first time in months when a game is out that they're interested in. How do you know that, Phil? Where are you getting these statistics from? Is YouTube allowing you to see these specific statistics on individual users of their website? Because if so, I guess let me get a link to that statistics page. I'm kind of a numbers guy myself, and if you didn't know, go ahead and ask Jay. He just says these things so confidently, I'm almost convinced that he has secret statistics. I know that he doesn't, obviously. It's just the guy talking out his ass. But like I said, he's so confident with it. Where did he even get this idea from? And I thought he was a crowdfunded individual that is mostly supported via tips and super chats and memberships on his live streams. Why is he so concerned about these video on demand style viewers? And you can kind of get that sentiment from his chat that's on screen right now with Steak Sandwich saying live audience greater than on demand. Girl wearing purple saying, is he turning to VOD comments because chat all agrees for Tekken, the literal only thing chat has ever agreed on? Again, it just seems like his priorities are all mixed up. Does he focus on streams or does he focus on video on demand? Because he's clearly incapable of doing both. Even though most other content creators do both just fine, DSP's a special style. I think a lot of people will come back when I start Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And then... <laughs> Later this year, there'll be more action-oriented games and more people will come back for those as well, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. And I need your feedback about what, uh, how to cover this stuff, okay? Really. Um, so please, please offer that up. I want that info, okay? Really, I need it because I'm just stumped right now. I'm, I'm looking at the videos and I'm like, wow, what a great set of Paul gameplay yesterday. I really hope that I please my audience because I really worked hard to get better with that character. And then I look at the views, it's like, what happened? Like, no one's watching these videos at all. Like, what the hell happened here? I don't know. If I'm getting more views on my turn-based RPG playthroughs than my action-based fighting game coverage, there's an issue. <laughs> you see? And I really feel like, what is going on? So... 
why would that be an issue? What are you saying right now? Maybe your audience isn't as into fighting games as they used to be. Maybe their preferences have changed over and they are now more interested in this humongous turn-based RPG that is Baldur's Gate 3. There's nothing wrong with that. People's preferences do tend to just change over time. I've said before, no respect for a switch up, but changing your preference for something over time because you just grow to love something different is not a switch up. That's completely different. But it just seems to me like he wants these RPGs to do bad for some reason over the fighting games, and I don't understand that. Why would you want some of your own content to do worse than others? But real quick, we're just going to skip ahead because he starts talking about Like a Dragon, which I don't personally give a shit about, and then someone comments about Tekken 8 again. So we're going to skip to that part. What I love is when you get idiotic things said like this in the chat. He says, it's you, it's not the game. Oh, so that's why when I was playing Street Fighter 6, there was tons of attention and views. And now when I'm playing Tekken 8, there's not. Because it's me playing it. It makes no fucking sense. You're an idiot. Bye-bye. I love it. There's dunce level stuff like that. Completely worthless feedback. Not constructive at all. Just moronic stuff that some idiot says because they don't like me. I just wanted to throw that in there at the end because I wanted to see it. And I wanted you to see it. We already talked about how he is absolutely playing Tekken 8 differently than he was playing Street Fighter 6. And that's probably vaguely what they were talking about. They were talking about how he is engaging with the game differently. He is treating it differently than he was playing Street Fighter 6. And he's not nearly as interested in Tekken 8 as he was with SF6. But of course, he's just a stupid troll detractor who doesn't know what he's talking about. And he got sent to ban world. Welcome to the club, buddy. Of course, another big shout out to Snort Hogan for the clip in this one as always I appreciate it brother shout out to everybody who watched the video especially if you made it this far and a special big ups to all of my members I absolutely love you guys you're the best but hopefully I catch all of you guys in the next video but until then make sure that you check out other detractor channels and dive deeper into that snortex ah!